G'day folks, it's Rico here from the Off-Road Adventure Show. Now recently, we were lucky enough to get our hands on the brand new Cobb Supreme from the guys at Cobb. Now what makes this different is that it's much larger than the previous model, which is great if you're going to be feeding a crowd, which is what I'm going to be doing tonight. Now it's inspired me to come up with a new recipe, I haven't tried it before, so fingers crossed it works out. It's called Rico's Bourbonated Ribs. Let's get into it. The first thing you're going to need is a couple of racks, in my case I've got three racks here, of US style pork spare ribs. Now there's a little bit of prep work that needs to be done with the spare ribs. And what has to happen here is we've got two sides of the ribs. We've got the back and the front. Now in the back, along here there's a membrane that holds it all together. Now it's a good idea to peel that away. It's a bit tricky and it's a little bit fiddly. But it's a good idea to peel the membrane away and get rid of it before you marinate your ribs. Start by cutting them into portions. And here you can see the membrane that I'm talking about that needs to be peeled away. Okay, so once you've gotten rid of your membranes and you've portioned up your ribs, there's a couple of things that we need to get happening before we start marinating. Now the first one we need to do, and this is a little bit different, is we're gonna soak these in bourbon and coke. So take your favorite brand of pre-mixed bourbon and cola, put your ribs into a big container. So we've got a nice stain -o bowl here. Put them all in. If you're anything like me, you're an absolute sucker for a cold bourbon. This is the painful part. Depending on how many ribs you've got, it can take anywhere from a couple to half a dozen cans. I reckon in this case it's probably going to be around about four. Now typically the longer you leave this the better. Uh, I'm going to put it aside for probably two to three hours. Um, four to six would be better, but two to three will still do the job. So we'll just get that one out of the way for now. Oh look at that, how good does that look? Alright, the next trick is I'm also going to smoke these in the cob. Now what I've got here is some hickory sawdust. Now you can't just use any sort of wood for smoking. It needs to be free of resin, otherwise it's going to put a bad taste through the meat. Now I picked these, uh, these chips up here from BTF and we're looking for probably about a good handful. Maybe a little bit more. Better. Yeah, a quarter of a glass there, I reckon, which is what we're after. Putting a hickory to the side. And again, this is where the name bourbonated comes from. There's plenty of bourbon in this one. But don't worry, it all cooks away. So we're going to soak these chips in bourbon. And don't worry, this bourbon isn't going to be wasted either because we're going to strain these chips off after an hour or two and they're going to go into our marinade. The marinade is going to be used to, to base the ribs while they're cooking the cob. So set that one aside as well. So while our ribs are soaking in the beam and cola and our chips are doing their thing, we'll start to get our marinade ready. Now, you could make your own, granted, and look, sometimes I do, but today we're going to do it the easy way. We've got some smoky barbecue marinade, which is greater on pork, fantastic. One of those, or two of those actually, two smokies. And one honey barbecue. So a two to one mix here. The honey barbecue is gonna help it really caramelize up, get nice and dark and sticky and sweet. It's gonna be fantastic. Into that goes a fair whack of black cracked pepper. You do it to taste. I really like a lot of cracked pepper on my pork. 
And I've got a few little garlic granules here as well, which go a treat in a marinade. You don't need to go over the top of that, just a, just a shake. All right, now what we'll do is we'll wait for our, our chips and our bourbon to infuse with one another. So the bourbon's gonna come out with a much, much woodier flavor than normal. And the chips are gonna obviously come out with a lot more of a bourbon flavor than normal. We'll separate the two. The chips are gonna go into our little smoker box and into the bottom of the cob. And the rest of the bourbon's gonna go into our marinade mix. So we'll give it a couple of hours, we'll come back and we'll see it all come together. All right, well now it's time to separate the bourbon from the wood chips. Remember, we're gonna put the bourbon, minus the wood chips, into our barbecue marinade. And the wood chips are gonna go into our little stainless steel smoker box. All right, nothing too tricky about this. Simply a case of grabbing a strainer. Pouring it all in. Now it doesn't matter if you get up a, a couple of little bits of sawdust or wood chip in your marinade. It's all part of the flavor. Let's give it a little squeeze, get the excess bourbon out. Set these chips aside to dry out for a little while. About a half an hour ought to do it. And then they're ready to go into the smoker box. And on top of the, uh, the heat beads once they're in there. Cover him back up. Let them sit there and let those flavours infuse and do their thing. Alright, well everything's been soaking and marinating and infusing and doing all those things for quite a while now. I know there's a little bit of prep involved in this recipe. There's a little bit of mucking around. But trust me, it's going to be worth it. So here we have our pork ribs that have been soaking in the pre-mixed bourbon and cola for about three hours now. It's time for those to go into the, what would you call it? It's not strictly a barbecue sauce marinade anymore. It's a bourbonated barbecue beast of a marinade. It's gonna be spectacular. All right. Don't be shy to use your fingers here. And you can see that this meat has started to change colour already. That's due to the acid in the cola. And it's going to be so, so sweet. Yeah, we just want to make sure that all of this meat's really well covered in the marinade. And again, it's a similar story. The longer you leave this, the more the flavours are going to fuse, the better it's going to be. It's, it's the same with any sort of marinade, or bourbonade, or whatever you want to call this one. But in this case, it's a, it's a pretty strong mix. There's a lot of good flavours going on here, and I reckon it's only going to need an hour or two. So that's what we'll do. And then we'll get that straight into the cob. Probably a couple of hours in the cob, I reckon. And now it's time to get some chips. Remember these chips have been soaking in bourbon for quite a while. Oh, that's incredible. Big goes on. And that is ready to go. All right, now it's time to put some heat beads in there. When you're working with heat beads that are red hot like this, something simple like a welding glove makes it so much easier. All right, actually, I'm gonna pop that back on. So I can bung a little smoker box there on top. Put this bad boy back together. Another little handy tip. A bit of non-stick spray on your rack before the meat goes on. Makes a world of difference. All 
One of the real beauties of working with the cob is that although there's some intense heat going on in there, you can actually still pick it up. The base remains nice and cool, which is great. So even though I'm working on a glass top here out here in the backyard, we're not going to have any issues. It's going to be good. All right, well, the, uh, the bourbon-infused hickory chips have been smoking away. Now it's time to get my pork ribs in. started with 12 heat beads in here and I reckon that should be enough but it's probably going to take a couple of hours which is what you want with pork ribs anyway the slower the better well there you have it they look absolutely spectacular that's Rick's bourbonated pork ribs now if you'd like to win one of these Cobb Supremes for yourself all you need to do is head to our Facebook page give it a like and follow the link, it's as simple as that. We'll be announcing the winner on the 31st of October. For more information on the entire Cobb range, head to cobbaustralia.com.au.